Hey guys, I just got off work. I'm in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and we're gonna go for a little walk through High Park. I'm in the midst of editing a couple things, but uh, this week, all I can offer is a walk, and I'm also gonna stream on Sunday with Trent, which is always a blast. Literally look forward to that more than my birthday. So, okay, anyways, let's freaking walk. It's really beautiful outside, you should see. Here we are. It's a beautiful day outside. And this is one of the first days I feel like I'm really seeing a lot of leaves, a lot of green. And it's making me very happy. But I don't know how to get into the woods from here. The houses on this side of High Park are so beautiful. They get to be covered in all this foliage. Like, you just feel like you're in cottage country all of a sudden. If I was ever gonna buy a house in Toronto or even Canada. Like, look at that house. I'm obsessed with that house. Because, I don't know, I'm not obsessed with Canada or the idea of buying a house here. But if it was something like that, maybe I'd spend my money. But, I'd, but then I don't have the money for that, so. There must be a little secret passage over. I think I see a bridge. Oh, there's a bridge, perfect. But yeah. Ooh. I should get my Merlin app out. This is a little sneak peek into the birding dock. Okay, I've got my Merlin app going in my back pocket. I want to go this way. It's so beautiful out. I've been pretty stressed lately. I've been trying a lot of things to mitigate it. I don't know. I'm just really excited to move into my apartment in June. Life just kind of feels on pause and that's not really very fun. But it's always refreshing to come out to nature and uh, see that everything's still in working order. Yeah, and the fresh air is very rejuvenating. Makes me feel like everything is gonna be okay. And it's nice too, I've walked around a lot of parks all over the world and the smell of nature is like always consistent it's like an always familiar thing nature it's always changing but but it's always familiar and that's nice i feel like all i want lately is something that I love that is consistent and uh, I think nature is a reliable source of that looks like there's an opening we'll go up this is a fun passage <laughs> I'm really excited to move out I feel like it's easier to be creative when I feel like I'm living somewhere that I like and I feel like I'm living somewhere where I have a routine that I love and my parents place I can de definitely have like a safe and comfortable routine but you know they're living in suburbia I'd love to have a routine that consists of waking up and going to make breakfast and seeing someone around my age also doing that and and maybe go into a cafe in an area where a bunch of friends live. So maybe I run into a friend at the cafe. And I don't know, having a climbing gym nearby and a bookshop. And uh, I think that'll be coming up. So that's great. And I, uh, I found that for myself in Rotterdam, which was really wonderful. And uh, 
my brain just keeps wanting life to be perfect all the time, but uh, that's not how it works. Sometimes, sometimes it's going to be very far from perfect and that's all part of our stories. And it's not even that far from perfect, I think my brain is just, you know, just frustrated, but that's okay. Maybe even frustrated is too aggressive of a word. It's just like, it just knows how much better it's been. It's, it's weird as you <laughs> keep living and you keep having better and better experiences. Um, you just wish every day could be as good as your best experiences and, and that's unrealistic. So. I need to come to terms with that. I saw something recently and it talked about how in a lot of cases it's good to put risk before security and I guess that's just what being brave is called. And uh, just been thinking about that because I think sometimes my brain will claw for security, but by doing that, it kind of ends up ripping up the foundation of it. <laughs> and, and it turns out that taking a risk would have been the best thing to do, nevertheless. And uh, you know, what's gonna happen is, is gonna happen and resistance is never really going to be the option that gives you the, the most pleasant, calm outcome. Although, you know, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the resistance just happens and, and really you don't know how it's going to turn out. So you can really react however you want. You never really know how it's gonna go, but usually, more often than not, the odds are usually in the favor of if you resist less, then, then more will come. And walking around in nature definitely reminds me of who I am when I'm not resisting. I'm a very peaceful, loving, open person. And when I find things that I love, I don't like to lose them like anyone else. But of course, change is always happening. And uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe that's vague. But I just, I just miss the Netherlands. But now I'm just working on building the thing that I liked again. And it's good now to know, to have a reference for what I like. It's a lot easier to try to build that now. It's not from, from scraps anymore. Yay! There's a song, there's a song by The Fray that I forget what it's called right now, but one of the lyrics in it is that sometimes the hardest thing and the right thing are the same. And sometimes I think that's true. Um, but I mean, ultimately, I don't really think there's ever a right thing. But, um, but it's a peaceful thought in that when times of resistance do come up and something that you can't control is happening and causing you to feel resistance um, that you just need to let it happen and you need to let it go and I feel like in times like that there can be periods there's periods 
that I'm doing really good at letting something go. But then you remember the waves of, of why you really don't want to. And, and you keep clinging to something. Let's see if Merlin has found any birds. We just picked up a red-winged blackbird and a cardinal, apparently. That's all right. But yeah, I feel like my brain just needs to stop making so many plans and stop imagining so many deadlines and just uh, take life day by day. I mean, it's good to have goals. It's good to know what you want and to put your energy in the direction of them. But ultimately, you have to you have to remain calm, otherwise you won't be ready when it's ready for you. If you don't remain calm, maybe something will finally be ready for you, but, but you'll have freaked yourself so, out so much that now you're not ready anymore. Okay, let's try to find our way back. <laughs> There's a fork in the road immediately. I don't know, I'm just gonna try to go upwards. I think I know where I am. But yeah, I think the act of letting go or at least releasing resistance bit by bit. Hi. <laughs> I think it involves just trusting that no matter what happens next, you are constant and you are capable and deserving and worthy. And you always need to carry forgiveness with you. For other people who were confused along your story <laughs> and for your stuff for yourself and you come out of times of confusion and even when you're going through them everyone always talks about compassion I think it's hard to be inside and to feel compassionate. <laughs> I think it's a lot easier to practice compassion when you go for a walk and you can hear and see everything going on around you. I think, yeah, there's one quote from a guy who I forget who, Nietzsche, I think he was talking about how uh, he said something along the lines of never trust a thought that you had indoors. And I think that's so true as someone who can get into thought spirals. As hard as it can feel to, to take yourself outside. It is so good for just getting your mind back on a peaceful path. Yeah. But I think this is my bridge. Oh, I know what kind of ducks these are, but I forget. Oh, these are just mallards. Just a bunch of mallards.
Oh, I think those are frogs. That funny sound. Ooh, who was that? Baltimore Oriole. That's an Oreo. Whoa. Oh. Red winged blackbird. Oh, wow. are being dramatic. Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. Oh, those aren't mallards. Oh, Max told me what those ones are, but I forget. Those are some pretty ducks. sound like squeaky, squeaky toys. Oh, I guess the mallards, I think it is the mallards that are fighting then. And then there's these squeaky guys. I wonder if my app will tell me. Wood duck, that's what it is. Wood ducks. They are so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Looks like they're all dating. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at them. All the ducks are in love now. <laughs> That's so cute. I think that light tweeting is the American goldfinch, I think. <laughs> 